For initial setup, I just created a new project using the blank activity template. Let's start off by heading into our activity main XML file. Click on the text tab and then delete the hello world text view. After that, change the root layout to relative layout and get rid of the grayed out XML NS attribute. For the sake of time, let's head over to the design tab to add some buttons. Drag two buttons next to each other and drag one more button below them. Now let's go back to our XML by clicking on the text tab. Change the ID of our first button to start button and then change its text to start. Change the ID of your second button to pause button and then change its text to pause. You also want to make sure to change any of the layout alignment references for this button to our ID for our start button. Let's give our text button an ID of reset button and set its text attribute to reset. Remember to change the layout references to your ID for the pause button. Now, one of the simplest ways to get a timer working in Android is to use a widget called a chronometer. So above our buttons, let's go ahead and create one. Set its layout width and height to wrap content and give it an ID. Give it a text color attribute and set it to a shade of blue so that it stands out a bit more. We also want to add a text size attribute to make our text bigger. Then let's use the layout above attribute to put it above our start button. Under that, use the center horizontal attribute to center our chronometer. And finally, I'm going to give it a margin bottom of 55 dp to separate it from our buttons. Now that we're done with our XML, let's just take a peek at it in our design tab to make sure everything looks okay. Sometimes when you start changing stuff exclusively with XML, some misalignment happens. In this case, my buttons aren't exactly where I want them, so I'm going to make an adjustment. Now that our XML is all taken care of, let's open up our main activity Java file. At the class level, I'm going to declare buttons for our start button, pause button, and a reset button. We also need to declare a chronometer. And under that, declare a long variable called last pause. Last pause is going to keep track of when we last hit the pause button in our program. We need this value to know at what time to start our chronometer again when resuming from clicking the pause button. Now in our onCreate method, let's hook up our buttons and chronometer we just declared above with our XML elements by using the findViewById method. Next up, we are going to use pause button to call set on -click listener and pass a new on -click listener interface into it so that we can use its onClick method to make our button do something when it's clicked. You might be wondering why I'm starting with the pause button rather than the start button. Well, I want to show you what I'm going to do with our last pause variable so that the logic for our start button makes more sense. In the onClick method, we need to assign last pause to the return value of the systemclock.elapsedTime method. Systemclock.elapsedTime will be keeping track of how much time has passed since we started up our chronometer, so it only makes sense that we want to capture that value at the time of the pause. After that, we're going to call the stop method on our chronometer to stop it from updating. While this next step isn't required, I think it's important to create polished applications so that users can't break them by doing strange things like continuously pressing the pause button. So what we're going to do is call set enabled on our pause button and pass in false to disable it until the next time they hit start button. We're also going to enable our start button because I'm going to disable that after it's pressed in the next listener. Now above our pause method, let's set up an onclick listener for our start button. In our onclick method, we're going to type a simple if statement. What we want to do is check if last pause is not equal to zero. If it's not equal to a time of zero, that means we've paused the application. If we paused it, when we hit start, we want to resume where we left off, 
rather than starting at zero. To do this, we are going to call the setBase method on our chronometer in order to set the time we want to use. Then we need to pass in the chronometer's getBase method to get the time we last set our base to. After that, add systemclock.elapsedTime, which is when we first started our chronometer. And lastly, we need to subtract the time when we last paused our chronometer using our last pause variable. For our else statement, we can safely assume that we want to start from zero, so we're going to call set base and pass in systemclock.elapse real time. Now we just have to start up our chronometer. For our polish, I'm going to disable my start button so that our users can't press it until they either pause a chronometer or reset it. And we need to enable the pause button in case it was disabled. Now underneath our pause button, let's implement our reset button. Set up its onclick listener and then go inside of its onclick method. Starting off in here, we're going to simply stop the chronometer from running. Then call set base on our chronometer to pass in elapsed real time so when we start up our chronometer again, it'll start at zero. And we want to set our last pause to zero because we are resetting the timer and don't care about when we last paused it anymore. Then we're going to enable start button and disable our pause button. Alright, now that's it for our code. So now when I run my app, I can click on my start button and it works as expected. I can pause it and it'll stop momentarily. And when I hit start again, it'll begin right where it left off. And when I'm ready for a fresh slate, I can just hit the reset button. And there you have it. You now know how to create a simple timer app using a chronometer in Android. I hope you found this tutorial useful.